lead copper, which is pretty much in the 90% of the time, it's pretty good uh, it's within the norms. Uh, you guys see right there, the average is 0 0.071 copper lead copper, which is pretty much the normal. Anything, anything over 1.000 is uh, negative. Part for me. Is there anything we can do to improve it? Is there anything we can do to improve it? Just I know they're in the norm, but as a city, what would it take to improve the water even more and maybe fix some of these even better? Well, if you're in the normal range, that's what that's what allow you a parameter of, of zero to ten or whatever it is. If you meet the parameters. That's basically all you do. If you want to, then you got to make, you know, everything's got to be copper and lead free right now, or lead free in the new, uh, new plumbing ordinance that has an effect of 2014. Uh, long as you're doing it, the new house is coming up, and and long as we keep testing, we retest the lead copper by TCQ every three years. That's, it, that's just the norm that we do because you got a lot of old houses. If they exceed that amount, then we make no worries and we should have to change that. But other than that, there's not really much of a So the metals are coming out when it goes through the pipes of the resident, not from No, it's, 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 it's a residence only. It has nothing to do with the, the well itself. The well has lead. The well has a lot of things, but it's, it's way down. Worse, I mean, way down. The, The new well, the new well we just drilled, we had to test it and it, it tested way and you know, all. Um, also, in this public hearing, we have discussion of possible action on ordinance number 051820B, amending the official zoning ordinance. Um, 1219. That's on the Tower. Yes, it's, it is that we've already approved this, but we're putting it in the whole ordinance now. We've already got an individual ordinance, and now we're adding it to the entire ordinance. So, um, so is this appendix X, F, F? It says, this is the ordinance, and I got that, with the official zoning ordinance. Oh, okay. Well, it says by adding the appendix. Appendix F. Yeah, yeah. Appendix F is the power of the So it's just putting it in it. It's adding it to the ordinance. I'll make a motion. Okay. All in favor? Right. Okay, so we'll go back to our council meeting. I'm sorry I'm all of this along. Discussion and possible action on approval of EDC expenditures for cleanup of Bogus Creek property. So you see from their minutes that uh, they want to spend ten thousand dollars to go towards cleaning up the Creek property. We just have to approve that expenditure. We wanted to do ten thousand dollars this year, so you know, for jobs and then we need more than the funds. We're talking about the creek bottom right here. Right here about high levels. Yes, from the sit from five forty one. Yeah. Who does the work? Our city does? We, um, we'll have the contract. Oh, that's our yeah. okay. okay, we just have to approve their expenditure department because they are under our board. I make a motion that we approve the $10,000. $10,000 expenditure for the cleanup of Creek All in favor? The racial profiling data report. Good evening, Mayor Council. The uh, racial profiling for 2019 uh, data was kind of late. Uh, it's usually done at the first uh, council meeting in March. Since we had this COVID, everything that's happening uh, it was kind of delayed for a lot of agencies. So we finally got it out July 13th. And uh, if you see on the, the 
third page, it gives you a listing of all our traffic stops uh, and all our uh, all our data for the year. I mean, I can go through every single one, uh, but it's all in the back. The very last page is a lot better, where it's uh, you can see how many stops, genders, race, uh, race prior to stops, reason for stops, location of stops, search conducted, searches for uh, reason for searches, contraband discovered. Descriptions of contraband results of stops, arrests based on what the violation and was any force uh, resulting in bodily injury during the stop. Oh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, uh, every year it varies the relationship profiling, so it starts from January 1st. To December 31st of uh, the same year, for instance, uh, 2019 January, December 31st, 2019, and in March, the first city council we should, we should be presenting it to city council, and this the agencies throughout the state of Texas and all that racial profiling to see what our basically profiling is here in the city code. Uh, we've done good um, last year. Uh, We've had a little bit more officers. We had last year a total of 1,100 traffic stops. This year, or 2019, we had 748. So, uh, again, every year it varies. Every year it varies. Uh, also, uh, in addition and pursuant to the reporting requirements, the City of Polk Police Department did not receive any formal complaints <coughs> alleging any Polk Police officers to be engaging in racial profiling for the year of 2019 which is great. Every year, ever since I've been here for six years, uh, officers have been great. We've never had any complaints. Um, engaging in any type of racial profile during the traffic stops. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, Would you like for me to do something yeah, yeah, sure. right. uh, And then for the, uh, for the month of June 2020, our reports uh, activities. We had a total uh, calls of service of 37. Uh, 20 were written reports, uh, which we got called on, and 17 were daily activities. Real minor information that we got jot down on our daily activity log. Um, the traffic enforcement for the, the month of June, uh, we conducted 111 traffic stops, 74 citations were issued, and out of that 111, 49 were giving warnings. Uh, Non-traffic enforcement citations were a total of eight. We had three for possession of drug paraphernalia, four possession of tobacco products by minors, and one possession of alcohol by minors. City ordinance, uh, we've been pretty good so far. We haven't had any calls or citations, so we have zero. So a total of 82 citations were uh, filed with the city uh, court or city of both municipal court for her review for her work. The uh, second page, uh, like I said, we had no code enforcement activities. Uh, and then you can see at the incidents of arrest, we've had uh, four of them, uh, possession of marijuana, an injury to the elderly where we had an individual assaulted mother, um, Traffic stops uh, basically had a warrant and drugs. And the last page is basically all our cases of what we had for the month of June. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a discussion of possible action for kids for water wells through the five line extension bills. Hello everyone. On uh, July the 9th of 2020, we received bids for the water lines and materials. And this includes 12-inch PVC pipes, valves, connection fittings, etc. And that's going to carry the water from the well up to the plant, all the way up to connect to the plant. Um, we received three bids. Four in Maine was a low bid, 
field or does that encompass the grounds? The grounds outside the field it is the city's responsibility. Inside the field, the big ones are the school responsibility and the small ones are the little ones. Okay, so, and this is going to the nets. Ultimately, whose responsibility is it to protect the fans from these foul balls that they're still complaining about? They're real foul balls. And I agree 100%. I think this is gone. I mean, I saw the net they put up today. I drove over there this person, and I'm like, that's just, a, I mean, that's not very big of a net, you know? The net that is firm. It's on the baseball field. On the high ball field. Yeah, and I mean, I see openings everywhere, but I'm like, when you're at a baseball game, you should be, if you go to a hockey game, or, I mean, if you go to any kind of game, you gotta be aware of, of the ball, or whatever's being played. Uh, there's still complaints going on over that. I just, I don't know how the contract's worded. Yeah, we need to be resolved of liability. That's, that's not on us. I don't know how it's worded. I've never seen it, but I just wanted to bring that up. Um, the second thing is those bathrooms and complaining about the women's toilets again. And honestly, I went in with this female and looked at them. They look like in such a stand bathroom. I mean, I really it's don't know what you're expecting. It's not like you're going to be at the Marriott Hotel, but who's responsible for the upkeep on the concession stand? Is that the cities or is that? The restrooms are taken care of by the city as far as cleaning and There is some need for cooperation during the season because they're having games so often. Well, but just the girls after practice would be free. Um, sure. Well, they just need to make, make be more intentional with keeping it clean. Right. Um, I mean, I looked at the toilets, they sit low on the ground, but it's a mixed use small. kind of toilet. I didn't, I said, well, they're not clean, but I wouldn't know what you would expect. Put a porter body up there. Yeah, the do door. that and just make it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that I was all. They're, they're yeah. still planning because they want a nicer they, bathroom. Yes, so and I agree 100%. That's a, that's a baseball for the bathroom. But you're worried about the liability with the, with the netting, right? Yes. Right, I'm going to ask. Okay, we did pay for that to be put up last year. We um, polls F and W provided and then we paid for the installation and uh, literally found the new the rest of them how often do you check yeah. How often do you check the restrooms? We should every other day. But we, we don't want to have typical sometimes sometimes activity. Um, the tax report we have, and um, he started giving us his. Judge Potter left us her, and that's here to talk about. June 2020, if you look down, total gallons of water were produced at 11.6 million gallons. Last year, 2019, it was 10.6. About a million gallons difference. Average per day is 0 .3, 389,000 to 353,000 last year. The maximum per day is 647,000 to 509,000 last year. The minimum is 187 to 178. Wastewater plant, we took in 1.4 million last year. At this time, it was 4.4. The average gallon per day that we receive is 138,000 versus 147,000 last year. The maximum per day is 162,000 versus 387,000. That's we have a it's infiltration from the right. Minimum gallon is 114,000, 125. Uh, orders we discharge on irrigation field. Field one is 892,000. Field two 724. Field three 789. So total gallon is 2.4 million gallons. Ponds right at 
uh, slowly going down due to the heat. Uh, BLD for Pond 1 was 36, BLD for Pond 4 was 34, PhD was 905 and 889. Uh, getting back to the water well, we got the bids for the, the line and, um, and for the labor of it. Right now we're working on uh, we'll prove the bid or we'll prove the bid for Moyes before we put that pump in. We're still waiting on them to come. I guess they're still due to the COVID thing. I think the pump is having a hard time trying to get out of Easton. So that's what they're waiting on for that. Uh, the electrical part of this thing, we're, we're all slowly working on that. And we've got our uh, Carroll Industries that's going to be doing electrical work for us to try to pull from the meter pole to the, to the road. We finally got the specs to him. We got the specs for Moyes. We got the specs to him, so we can go and get the electrical panels and get them started with the install. Uh, walking trail is walking trail is pretty much done, except for the concrete work at the two creeks. We're trying to trying to get them to give us a bid on that, just so we can get those approved. Um, walking trail still got a little bit of work, but right now we're kind of seeing what the rain, we're getting kind of rain luck that that helps seal that walking trail a little bit more before we start paving. If not. We're going to have water and we'll get. Uh, you got to pave it? We're going to pave it. I sure we get sprayed. So, so we're going to try to, we're going to add it with our seal coat project that we do every year. So once we get that, um, we got some, we got some pricing on some of the rock coming in. And right now, you can put out bids for the, for the work of uh, the seal coat. The stuff they do on the water meters. Yeah. The water meters, they started today, so they've probably got basically maybe 100, 150 a day. 100, 150 a day? We got, five, we got five crews working right now. So. That's all painting. painting yeah. meters. We have some inactive meters, start to save us some money. We're not going to mess with those. We're just going to bypass those. We'll, we'll plug those meters in as the, the meters come open or somebody activates them right now. Um, as soon as you get some of the meters in, right now they're having a hard time going through town. Addresses in the front, meters in the back, so they're having a hard time trying to find them. Uh, once they get into the subdivision, the housing areas, they should be a little bit uh, They're still working on two inches of wet, so they two inches they need to replace them out of there, so that's going to slow them down a little bit. We've got four or five compound meters, which are obsolete. We're still got the ground, so we're going to put a regular read, two inch meters where we're supposed to go, and then we should have everything pretty much in the next part of the church. What we're looking at as we go, if you see it by the school, we started the curbing, we broke around today, we're going to curve from elementary all the way to, on uh, Brink here, all the way to 181, and we're going to come down from Brink here to Carroll, down to the south, to uh, right here by Gene Nichols House. So, we have broke ground for that, so we're trying to get that to play. Hopefully, they said, Nothing happened, they should have the curving up by the end of the week. As far as the, you know, we're putting that lean to up, we're just waiting on the tent for the concession stand. So we have that lean to that's going to be covering that, so that's going to help with foul balls. This thing, that, that, was, that was a legit thing they were saying, so we're going to have that tent roof, so that should legally a lot of problem. As far as the pop ups, well, they're complaining about the they wanted that thing. They wanted a few minutes ago. Anyway, so that's all. That'll help. As far as that full netting they went over, the concession stand and all that, that's, and I've talked to a lot of city that's very labor intensive, put it up, take it down. The, the, the lifespan of them things is for three to five years because the sun, a lot of them leave them up, leave them up, and it, it's, not, it's not feasible to do. Yeah. Right. Shall we get soon?
talking about and talking to and asking you know, or the things you need. If you have an idea about a pay raise, you know, 2%, 3%, what do you think? Um, thinking about hiring into a full time because she works full time or not with um, Angela. She Believe does it. the part. Oh. Or she does the. Well, yeah, then she cleans the thing. So, um, thinking about that would be a good thing. She did a bubble gum machine, but she told me today she knows we're going to go 2,500 hits. It's going to crash the site. So, it's something that you have to look at. The hay bale, she did a bell on it. Like oh. 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 So people going through town and taking pictures of uh, his Facebook, and she said it, it made the channel for it again. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, it's, she likes, she really enjoys keeping it. She sees a mess, she tries to clean it up. And, and really she's cool. Yeah, I, I said, um, are you supposed to be doing this? Well, I just like to. Anyway, we'll have to have some conversation about what, as far as she she do as an employee versus what she does as a citizen. We just do what she wants to do. So um, anyway, so I think we covered everything. We can adjust.